Hi everyone, welcome once again. I'd like to say thank you to all our subscribers and to all the leaders you came around. Congratulations to everyone looking forward to the exam. We wish you all the best. In today's video, I'll, we'll be, I'll be talking about the fluid balance chart, which is a skill station. It is a written station and it is 12 minutes. And you're going to be having your summary sheet and the fluid balance chart itself. There will be a calculator and you're going to have just one patient scenario. There has been a lot of misconception about having four patient scenario. Just calm down. It's not going to happen like that in those case. So you're going to have just one patient scenario. So if you look at the summary sheet together, the summary sheet is divided into two. You have the input section and then you have that of the output as well. The input can be further divided into oral intake and then the column for parenteral. Now, for the parenteral, your scenario can be like um, this patient has been prescribed 1,000 mils of 0.9% uh, sodium chloride to run for 8 hours. So you have to work out the hourly input for that normal cell line. And how do you get this? It is 1,000 mils and then it's to run for 8 hours. So you divide the 1,000 mils by 8. That will give us 125 mils per hour. Okay, so... Looking at the fluid balance chart itself, there are different columns. The patient name will have been perfumed, the hospital number, and the date as well. And then the time will be there. The, the chart is for 24 hours, so it starts from 8 a.m. till 7 a.m. the following day. The column for oral intake is the first one, then the one for entera. The entera is if the patient is on NG tube, and the parenteral is for any IV infusion. Now, the parenteral is divided into three parts, but you can always choose the first column because the patient is just going to be on, uh, it's only a uh, fluid that will be prescribed for your patient, so you can just stick to writing the IV fluid on that first column. And then the next one is the hour total, and then the, the one after that is the total input. So that's all that is written under the input. Now, for the output, you have the column for the urine, gastric losses, the one for bowels, brains, and then the hour total and the total output. Now, for the hour total, it means whatever that patient has had in that particular hour. For instance, if this patient has had a cup of tea or drank water at 8 a.m., so everything that that patient has had for that 8 o'clock, that is what you're going to write under your hour total. Now, the total input for each hour is now going to be the addition for the previous hour and then the present hour. So there's a scenario. So let's look at the scenario together. Now, for this scenario, this patient drank a cup of tea, 180 mils, at 8 a.m. You don't have to write tea there, just write the amount that the patient drank. So this patient took 180 mils of tea at 8 o'clock. So under oral intake, we are going to write 180. So at 8 o'clock, there is nothing else that this patient had. So it means under our total, the patient had only 180 mils. And because the patient just started drinking at 8 a.m., so it means under total input is still going to be 180. Now, at 10 a.m., normal saline, 500 mils, was prescribed to run from 10 a.m. to 1400. If you look at 10 a.m. to 1400, that's four hours. So you are going to divide the 500 mils by four. So if you divide 500 by four, it's going to give us 125 mils per hour. Now, there are two ways to go about it. You can start the 125 mils from writing it from 10 a.m. So if you are writing yours from 10 a.m., it means you're going to write 125 mils for 10 a.m., for 11, for 12, and then for 1300. So you're going to stop at 1300. However, someone else can say, oh, because we just put up this IV fluid at 10, so, and it's going to be whatever that patient has had in an hour. So it means that IV fluid is going to run from 10 to 11. So someone else can say, because it's finishing at 11, I'm going to write my 125 mils at 11 a.m. So if you have chosen that method, that means you're going to start from 11 a.m. 
and yours is going to end at 1400 so at 11 a.m 125 12 125 1300 125 and at 1400 125 mils whichever way you choose you are definitely going to be marked right okay so um the next uh, thing that this patient had was at 1500 so this patient had a cup of tea again at 1500 which is 180 so we write 180 there and then at 1800 another 500 mils of saline was prescribed so like we did earlier we're going to do the same as well now like i said earlier i said the total the hour total is going to be whatever that patient has taken in in an hour all right so let's look at 1800 at 1800 this patient had normal saline of 125 mils and then at 1900 he had a cup of tea, 180 mils at 1900, and and then had another 125 mils of normal saline. So for us to know the hour total, we are going to have that 180 mils plus 125. So that will give us 305. That means this patient's input for 1900 is 305. Okay, so that's how we are going to do for each of those time if. The patient has had anything prescribed or has eaten or has drunk anything so now for the total input like i said your total input is going to be the addition of the previous hour plus the present hour if you look at the one that we just uh, finished now the one for 1900 it is the hour total is 305 and the total inputs prior to that at 1800 is 985 so for us to get the hour the total input for 1900 it means we are going to add the total input for the previous hour which is 985 plus the present hour now which is 1900 which is 305 so 985 plus 305 will give us 1290 that's 1290 all right so that's how to go about it so it's the same method for the output as well so for the outputs at 900 this patient voided 230 mils of urine so we're just going to write 230 mils on that urine now there are some instances where the scenario would just say that um, the bowel or that bowel they would just say yes so for this scenario at 3 a.m we're told that this patient voided 280 mils of urine so we are writing 280 mils of urine under the column for urine and then at 3 a.m again under bowel we are just told that yes that means the patient opened the bowel but we are not told the amount so we are just going to put yes as well however if the amount was mentioned whatever the amount is you put it under bowels and then you find the hour total for each hour as well and then the total output for each hour and then you find the total for both the output and then the total for the output as well and the total for the input rather and the total for the output so for this scenario the total for our input is 1740 and then the total for our output is 1490 so we are going to find the balance how do we find the balance you're going to take your, your in away from how to so taking our output here 1490 away from the input which is 1740 that will give us a balance of positive 250 okay so our total balance is positive 250 and that is all about the fluid balance chart but i'm going to tell us some hints about fluid balance chart now before you even start writing on that chart as well it's advisable that you first sum up the input for the total input for that patient for that scenario itself the total input sum it up both the parenteral and the aura write it somewhere and then find the sum of the output as well write it somewhere and then try to get the balance put it down as well the reason for this is when you are writing on your fluid balance chart and you've made any mistake if you have not actually had a pre-knowledge of what your balance is you may not know that you have made any mistake but because you've had a pre-knowledge of what your final answer should be okay 
Now, if you make any mistake on that chart, if it doesn't tally, if your uh, final answer on that chart doesn't tally with what you've actually had previously, you will know that, oh, you've made a mistake. And because you sum up the output and then the input separately, you'll be able to retrace it where the mistake is. If it's input, you'll be able to know that, oh, okay, I think I need to go through my input again. Now, if you make any mistake, how do I correct that? Just put a, a, a straight line, just strike it out just once and don't model it up as, at all. Try to put your initials if possible, put your initials after striking it out, put your initials. And if you think that your chart is not neat enough, it's better for you to ask, ask for another one. Just make sure that your writing is legible and it's clear. And then for the last part, you don't forget to write your name and the uh, Print your name, your signature as well. It all depends on you. You can always put your name on that flip balance chart and the date even before you start to write on that chart so that you wouldn't forget because it's going, not going to be nice if the reason why you have to go for your back for your exam is because you've forgotten to put down your name. So always remember that you need to print your name and then you sign as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something from this. See you some other time. Bye for now.